Hello, good to see you. Pastor Sam with a devotion for December 3rd. We're going to talk today a little bit about humility. Humility. Considering others to be better than ourselves and how we act in humility towards others. We're going to get into that in our reading today in 1 Peter. So let's get started. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From 1 Peter chapter 5. So I exhort the elders among you, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Silvanus, a faithful brother as I regard him, I have written briefly to you, exhorting and declaring that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. She who is at Babylon, who is likewise chosen, sends you greetings, and so does Mark, my son. Greet one another with the kiss of peace. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. Peter is ending his first letter with a little bit of words for... Now, when you hear the term elder, we have a little bit different language today. In, in New Testament language, there were a few different words that basically all meant pastor. Elder is one of those words. When you hear shepherding kind of language, that is uh, pastor. Actually, the, the word shepherd is the one that kind of directly became pastor. But there's elder and there's pastor and kind of overseer too. Those are three words that all basically mean pastor. Now, maybe I'm sure somebody has written about the nuances of the different words and whether that's true or not, I can't say. But if you're interested, I mean, you can, I'm sure there's a book about it somewhere, but they all basically mean pastor. And when Peter is writing in verse 1 to the elders, that's not like, don't not, not the guys who are up there doing the readings and helping with communion, not those elders, but like me, basically. There are, um, so our elders nowadays are, would, would I guess be more like the deacons in kind of like Acts, oh, I think that's like Acts 5 or 7. Or something like that but but like sort of assisting in in their function still performing the work of God um, but Peter's words here are directed towards me towards me so I'll go over them a little bit I realize that I'm not you I'm the only me that there is in the world but it's still helpful to kind of talk over what it is that Peter is telling me to do so we'll we'll kind of talk about it now he's again using, he doesn't use the words humility, I better, okay, at least, at least not referring to me, but he's talking about kind of this um, middle of the road sort of uh, humble language all the same. Okay, so he says um, oversight, like leadership and direction, not like whip and whip, whip and tiny chair, well, I don't know why I need it, but, but not like driving you to be doing things, but like, hey, guys, let's let's go this way. We're going to do this thing. Come on. Come on. Let's all go over and do this thing. Come on. Come on, guys. We're going to 
We're going to do this. Um, not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Again, like, I'm, I'm not in this for the money. That, that is abundantly clear to me. <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm, I'm in it because I believe that God has told me to do it, which is always a good thing, a good reason to do a thing because God told you to do it. Um, yeah, so there, there, there's no shameful gain here, right? Um, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. So again, it's this kind of middling ground, not like, hey, you guys, you need to do this thing, but like, we're going to, we're going to all come together and like, come on, walk, walk this way. Come, come over. Come on, come on, come, come on, come on, come on. We're going to all do this together. And, and that I'm going to do it with you guys. Not like you go over there and do that thing and I'm going to sit over here. But like we all together are going to do this thing together. It's this attitude of humility. Not like that I'm up here and I'm like, hey, you you down there people. Ah, you have to go do, right? That's not what it's about. It's about we're, we're all together, God's people. And, and, and I'm like, Okay, let's 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 head over this way. We're not going to go that way. That way's okay. That way's okay, but just we're not do we're going this way, guys. Okay? We could go that way, but we decided to go this way. So let's all go this way. Okay? Right? It we're we're, we're not that that way's fine, but we decided not <laughs> I don't I don't know how else to say it, right? It, it it's it's again an attitude of humility. Not that I'm better than you guys. I'm certainly not better than you but I have this unique position of providing leadership and guidance and direction and, and that kind of thing. And so I'm like, come on, come on, come on. We're, we're going this way, guys. Let's, let's all go together as we go this way. And then Peter's instructions to me being over, ha, passive paraphrastic, he begins, look it up, he begins his um, instructions really to all of us. It's not like stuff to me and then stuff to you in the sense that I don't have to worry about this, but instructions to all of us. Again, it's this like collaborative, um, teamful, I guess I'm making up words, so let's just make up words, teamful approach that all of us are doing this together. And again, um, I, I guess I'll talk about this because there's, I think there's a sense, there, there's like an, a subconscious, um, I don't want to say, reinterpretation of this that I think we do. Okay, I'm talking about verse 6 specifically, and so I'll read it. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Now, that doesn't mean humble yourself so you can, like, get cool stuff somewhere down the line, right? Or that God will do good stuff to you. Like, don't... you're. It's sort of a weird backward, like, I'm going to humble myself now because I know that it's going to get me cool stuff. Like, that's not humility. That's just delayed gratification, right? That That's not being humble so that you get cool stuff or like so that God, um, whatever you think exalts you mean, right? Being humble so that you get that is not the point. It's like, be humble and then God will just take care of you, right? That doesn't necessarily mean uh, he's going to do good things to you. There we go. The air quotes are going to save me, right? And what I mean by that is that thing in your mind that you think would be a really good thing, he might not do, right? Now, he might. I, I certainly don't know what God's going to do. He might do that, and he also might not do that. And I guess what I'm really cautioning is just be humble, right? Not so that, not as kind of like an exchange program. Okay, God, I'm going to be humble. And I know that you're going to help me out with this particular thing that I'm worried about. That's not really how it works. It's just be humble and God will provide for you and he'll take care of you because he does that anyway, even for the wicked. Although that's not a good reason to be wicked, but still, God is providing for you. And so just, it, it's it's talking more not needing to put yourself first, not needing to worry about 
number one, right? Being able to worry about other people and being able, being worried, <sighs> being able to worry about helping other people. Man, that was really hard to say. Just uh, that all of your time and attention and energy isn't like consumed with self, but that it can be turned outward towards the people that God puts in your life, right? That's that's more what it's talking about. Not that there's this subconscious like promise of delayed gratification that, okay, I'm being really humble right now and God, I hope you're watching me being really humble so that I get a cool thing later. I think we sort of do that subconsciously kind of expecting like a reward system where our our humble points can be redeemed further down the road for like a cool thing for an answer to a prayer right like i've been really humble god it would be really cool if you would now none of us say that but maybe we sort of think it as a fleeting thought like so, sort of in the question of why aren't you taking care of me god that's that's kind of where it comes out why aren't you taking care of me because I've been so very humble and because I've been following you and you promised to take care of me, so you need to follow through on your promises. It's kind of the extended version of that question. But God is providing for you, usually not in the way you expect because he's God and he does strange and unexpected things, things that we don't expect. Right? We can't figure this God out. He just does, he does provide for us. In, it, in, in, in my personal experience, right at the moment that it's needed and not a day beforehand, like not an hour beforehand, but right when it's needed, he provides for us. Not with any room to spare, but like sliding in, I'll use a baseball analogy, even though we're woeful. Yeah, I guess we're, we're way past baseball season. We're like sliding in right underneath and it's about to be tagged, but we just, oh, we barely made it. Like, oof, a second later and it would have been disaster. But God, or I guess, whatever, I don't know. Pick your metaphor, doesn't matter. But God, he does. He gives us what we need exactly when we need it. So we don't need to worry about ourselves. We are free to worry about other people and free to help other people. All right, what else does our friend Peter say? Um, then he's got this, I think there was, okay, it, it, that's what I was looking for. In verse 4 and again in verse 10, Peter is also pointing us forward to not really the reason why we don't have to worry, but just, I guess, more of a promise of God taking care of us. Here's what I mean. Verse 4 says, When the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Uh, so, like, be faithful. Be, be, be coming with me because we're going this way. We're not going this way. That way's fine, but just stop it, okay? We're, we're going this way, guys. Like, come on. Let's all go this way together. That way would have been fine, and we could have all chosen to go that way, but we picked this way, okay? So let's go this way together and just be faithful. <laughs> he's he's pointing out, Peter's pointing out the short temporariness of our now life contrasted with the long foreverness of our then life, right? Use the language, the unfading crown of glory, like the, the, um, the splendor and glory of living in God's presence forever, living in paradise with God forever. That's a good thing. That's God taking care of us in a super duper, um, can't ever be better than that way. I didn't have any better words than that. And then again in verse 10, after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Now this verse, okay, so I'll be a little bit careful. It's not only talking about the resurrection and living with God forever. Because God does restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish us now. But that's always a temporary thing. 
always temporary and always I don't want to call it like a poor excuse for it because that would be calling God's work poor and I don't think I want to do that but an incomplete right so he will incompletely restore you because he will restore you to a new and perfect body in the resurrection and incomplete confirming because whenever he says yes to you now about something that thing is going to like go away but he will say yes to you forever in the new creation he will incompletely strengthen you you're like aching and hurtful and sore and yeah maybe the pain goes away or maybe you just kind of deal with it but he will forever strengthen you in a body that won't ever get sore that won't ever wake up and be like oh my back in the new creation and he will incompletely establish you the lord puts you in a spot and maybe he'll move you to a different spot and then put you in that new spot but in the new creation he'll put you in a spot like forever so it's not a matter of um, only looking forward because God does these things now, but they're always, by comparison, incomplete. And um, oh, I had another word, but I didn't really like it. They're just, they're incomplete now. So like, look at the metaphor. I've kind of been dancing around it. The metaphor of healing, right? You get sick, you get better. Maybe you get a bad sickness and you don't get better. Uh, but God is going to raise you from the dead and you like won't get sick again. And that's, that's pretty, that's like perfect healing. Doctors desire to do that, to make you never sick again, but they can't. Only God can make you never sick again. So it, it's this kind of idea of, yeah, God provides now sort of in an incomplete way. So, so also be looking forward and putting these things in comparison. Man, it feels like I'm just reiterating my last like three or four devotions. I feel like I'm saying them in new language, but there's been a new reading each time. So maybe God's word is kind of talking about the same thing. Interesting point. Maybe God's word is trying to remind us again and again in different places and using different languages that he's in control and that he's doing some stuff now, but that he's going to do lots of really good stuff in the resurrection. When he comes, maybe that's like the point of God's word. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Interesting idea. I don't know. God's word seems to say that. And and, and that sounds like a... Th anyway. That's, all right. I got nothing else. I kind of... That was it. That was the big reveal. <laughs> so we, I mean, we can be going through our life now, again, being humble, not, not needing to worry about ourselves because God's taking care of us. And he does a good job. He does a good job of being God. That's the way I wanted to say that. He does a good job of being God. He does what he needs to do when he needs to do it. And he does exactly what he needs to do, exactly when he needs to do it. So like, I can be busy I can't say this phrase again. I can be busy being worried about other people. Telling all of you guys, come on, let's go this way, right? Because I don't need to worry about myself. I can be like, come on, come on, guys. We're all going. Let's let's head over <laughs> this way. There we go. Maybe a little bit of a lighthearted ending, but I feel like my last few devotions have been really heavy. So maybe we needed something a little more lighthearted look at uh, God's promises. So there we have it. We will close with prayer. Dear Lord God, we ask you to help us to take our eyes off of ourselves and to look around at the people that we can help. We thank you for all of the ways that you provide for us now and ask you to continue to remind us of your perfect promise to provide for us in the new life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I've said it before, and I guess I'll say it again. Um, sign up for Christmas Eve. A, a lot of you have, and that's wonderful. And I'm sure that plenty of you are going to be streaming it at home, and that is perfectly fine, too. Five o'clock service is the one that's going to be streamed, and then it'll be archived. So you could watch it at 7.30. You could just watch the archived service. at 7. So if, if you're a 7.30 person, and I know some of you are, 7.30 people, you can watch it at 7.30 in the safety of your own home. So just kind of do do what you think is best. I had something else I was going to mention. 
Oh, um, subscribe. There we go. I knew what it was. The so the the benefit of subscribing, and I'm sure I'm gonna point in the wrong corner. I think there's a little bell icon over there. It might be over there. See, this this looks so simple, me pointing to the right corner, but it's like I just can never understand anyway. Um, so the benefit is that you are notified when we have a new video, like when Pastor Corey or I put out new devotions each day, you get uh, like either an email or if you're doing this on your phone, your phone will beep at you that there is a new video so you can be like reminded that you can hear about Jesus again. So do that. Do that if you would, please. Um, there's a little button there for you to subscribe. And then there's like a little bell thing in one of these corners here for you to turn on. That'd be great. If you don't, that's fine. That's fine too. I know that you're coming back again and again. And I do want to thank you for giving me the gift of your time and for learning about Jesus. The, that second one is like a very good thing to do. And that first one I appreciate because I know that you can hear about Jesus in lots of places. So I appreciate you hearing about Jesus from me. There we go. Good outro. I'll see you next time. God's peace be with you.